Welcome to MCN and the 2023 fleet of MCN test bikes. These are long-term test bikes and uh, they're bikes that we run during the course of the year away from kind of a launch scenario or an MCN 250 scenario. And members of MCN staff live with these bikes for extended periods so we can kind of ride them and use them in more real world conditions and get to the nitty gritty of actually living with the bikes. So um, this is my bike uh, that I've been running all the way through 2023. It's Kawasaki H2 SX SE Touring Edition with panniers. And what I would normally do is interview the MCN staff and ask them to come up with a list of things they like and don't like about the bike. And then we can uh, discuss those points. But um, seeing as I'm the interviewer, uh, I'm not the interviewee, I'm gonna do it all, all myself. So I've got my list here and I'm gonna go through all the good bits and all the bad bits one by one. It's worth mentioning that I've done 12,000 miles on this bike in three or four months, but I did have another one of these at the beginning of the year, which was stolen in Naples. Uh, and on that one, I've done almost 3,000 miles. So I've done about 15,000 miles on, on the H2SX, but just not the same ones. Um, let's start with the good points. Um, and the good points are, most importantly, when you spend this kind of money on a bike, this is 26 and a bit grand. It's knocking on the door of 27,000 pounds, which is a lot of money for a motorcycle. And like most bikes I test, I couldn't afford one myself. But for your 27,000 pounds, you'll get in a bike that's got fantastic build quality, the paint finishes are great, and above all, the reliability. So. You know, when, when you live with a bike like this away from when you're road testing, you spend a lot of time cleaning it and just generally poking around it. Uh, and the build quality is superb, as most Kawasaki's are. The, the paint finishes, you know, even after all this time are, are really, really good. And just, just the way it's screwed together and the attention to detail is fantastic. And, you know, I've done quite a few trips on my SXs. So I kind of did, did half a trip to Italy and back. Um, I've ridden this one, that was on the old one. I've ridden this one to, to the Alps with some friends um, and also did a, a two week long, four and a half thousand mile trip around uh, Spain through France and Portugal, which is, which is a big old trip. But the best thing is, and exactly what you want to do when you walk out to your bike in the morning, you want it to start on the button and it, and it always does. So it's, it's completely reliable, which is what you would expect. Um, but it's not always the case nowadays. So, you know, that is the, the main big tick. You've got a really nice quality bike that's very, very reliable as well. Number two, I've written the kudos of this supercharger logo here, which is a real conversation starter. I mean, this, this bike's supercharged. Um, it's kind of a, a mild version of the original H2, which was kind of a fiery, super sport, supercharged bike. This is more of a tourer, so the supercharger is, makes the engine really, really smooth. It's got a really fat mid-range and, um, and it sounds great as well. But, but best of all is, is just a talking point. You know, people come and look at this bike and as soon as they see the supercharger logo, then it opens up a whole conversation about superchargers, which is really, really cool. And then, moving on from that is uh, the smoothness of this engine which is probably one of its its biggest points um it's when you're cruising and not thrashing it it just just purrs along four four thousand revs uh five thousand rpm along the motorway it's just just creamy smooth no vibration from the engine at all um it does an average of 47 mpg on my own 44 mpg two up um, and it's not it hasn't got that great a tank range you could squeeze if you're lucky 190 200 miles out of the fuel tank but really you don't want to be riding past the petrol station when you're on a motorway with any more than 160 miles really just in case there's not another petrol station in sight so for a touring bike the range isn't that great um, Moving on from the supercharged engine again, you know, it's all about performance with a supercharged engine, isn't it? And you know, the, the top end rush of this bike, once it, once it gets going is incredible. I mean, given that this bike is, 
is very, very heavy. It's over 260 kilos. When, you know, when you ask for the power up in the high res, it really, really gives it to you. And it's, it's, a, it's a fast, fast bike. Um, and of course, it chirps on the overrun. So if you've got high engine revs and you brake hard and you're going through the gears, you've got that lovely kind of chirpy whistle on the overrun, which is fantastic. Um, and the other big thing I love about this bike is, is the plushness of the suspension. So this has got a semi-active Showa suspension, um, which is, uh, it changes the damping as you ride along. You can fine tune the damping. And whether you just want to be cruising along two up, whether you're just normal road riding on your own, or if you're sporty riding, the suspension has got a really lovely sense of control all the time, but most importantly, comfort. This bike, you know, it's, it's at home on fast corners, fast motorways, just because the ride quality is so great. It helps that it's a heavy bike. Heavy bikes normally got good ride quality. They just stamp out the, the bumps. They don't shake and, and, and wobble. They just, they just plow on. The fact that it's got lovely suspension, it's got quite relaxed steering architecture. It's just arrow straight and completely smooth. So the suspension is a really big tick and also being able to adjust it on the dash really, really easily. You know, just, just to get it absolutely right, especially two up where you want more comfort than control in a straight line. It's fantastic. It's also got uh, electronically adjustable rear preload as well. So you can keep the bike level depending on whether you've got a load of a, a pillion or luggage. Handling, for its size, it does handle really well. It's not the, the fastest steering bike. As I said, it's quite low and quite long, um, but in fast corners, it's really, really stable. And you know, even up and down the Alps, when I was riding with my friends on, on Multistradas and S1000XRs, it can, you know, it can hold its own with bikes like that. So yes, it's good in the corners. The dash, I really, really like on this bike, full color dash. Um, but the thing I like best about it is its connectivity with your phone and you can use a, a sat nav with it, which is one of the, the best sat navs I've ever used on any bike. Um, the only disadvantage of that, when you've got the sat-nav app open, the, um, your phone stays on, so you can run your phone down unless you're, you're plugged in, but the sat-nav is, is very, very good. And, that's, that's, and it's a free app as well. It's taken me around the Sigic app, that's what it's called. It's taken me all around Europe, um, and it's, I just use the basic version, which is free, and it, it does a fantastic job. And the other thing about this bike is it gets a lot of admiring glances. Not so much... Um, from other riders, when I was on my riding trip with my friends, most of my friends thought it was hideous. <laughs> but to people who aren't that into bikes and they just see this amazing green thing floating along the road, it's a really, really impressive thing. But probably to its detriment, because when I was riding this through Naples, it probably stuck out like a sore thumb and probably one of the reasons we were probably followed to where it was parked outside a B&B and unfortunately stolen. Um, and then the comfort. This is, it's a sports tourer, so it's got to be comfortable. It is relatively comfortable um, if you're the right size. I'm a little bit tall for this bike, but if you're a little bit smaller than me, I think you'd find the, the bar position good. You'd find the relatively low pegs comfortable. The seat is nice and plush for a couple of hours. Um, and because it's so smooth and so stable, Sort of overall it's a really nice place to be when you're grinding out the miles so let's move on to the things that i'm not so keen on so talking about this riding position again i think for a, a touring bike it's a little bit too sporty it is sportier than a ninja thousand sx which has got slightly higher bars so this this is actually quite wristy for me a um, lot of pressure on my wrist. The fact it's got cruise control is good because you don't always have to be hanging on. You can shake your right wrist down, which is really good. Um, the pegs, tiny bit cramped for me. Um, but yeah, after a couple of hours on this bike, it, it, it's not that comfortable for me. Uh, like a tall rounder or an adventure bike would be much better for doing long distance. And that's why they're so popular nowadays, isn't it? And then moving on from my comfort, the pillion comfort isn't great. So the pegs are quite 
tall for a pillion, so they're really cramped up on the back of the bike. And after a couple of hours, that can be sore for them as well. They've got to stretch their legs. And the other thing is, because this has got a um, rear radar detector, which works the blind spot indicators. This has kind of been added on since the SX came out in 2018. So it means that the number plate and mug guard is moved down to where it used to be. But now there's a big gap here where if you're going along in the wet, all the spray from the tire goes straight up into the, the pillion's back and down their trousers, which makes them uh, not very comfortable. Um, again, comfort, the screen is way too low for me. You know, I think this is a kind of a throwback to this style of bike in the 80s and 90s from the Japanese. All sporty bikes have low screens and, you know, in reality, most people need a, a bigger screen. So I'm right in the firing line of the wind all the time. And you can get aftermarket screens for the older SX, but once again, because of the new technology on this bike, this has got a little camera in the bottom of the screen, which is for the automatic high beam. Uh, and nobody makes a screen with this cutout. So I've kind of stuck, stuck with that screen, unfortunately. The panniers, really useful. These are kind of panniers, which you'll also find on the Versus 1000 and the Ninja 1000 SX. They're really useful. They're really easy to get on and off. I've got the inner bags that go in with them. I actually um, lost one just pulling away from my house one day where I didn't have it on properly and it followed me down the road like a football. Um, so the panniers are really useful, but the other thing you can't get for this bike is a top box. So Kawasaki don't do an aftermarket official top box. Um, you can get aftermarket ones, uh, Givy do one, Givy, Givy, um, for the old SX, but they don't do one for this one because, because of this radar system. They don't do a fitting kit that, that fits. So the two things I really wanted from this bike to do touring two up, which I do a lot of, was a top box and a taller screen. And uh, I couldn't have either of them, unfortunately. Um, but I'm sure that aftermarket accessories will come out for this model in due course. Um, I've also been using some, a couple of really nice tank bags. I'm currently using an SW Motec um, clipping tank bag, which is really, really nice quality. And then before that, I used an Oxford um, magnetic tank bag. Oxford make great tank, tank bags. They've been making them forever. They've all got lifetime guarantees. Um, and I think a tank bag there, when you can't have a top box is useful. <clears throat> and also with low bars, gives you something to lean against as well when you're doing touring. So I love, I love a tank bag. Right, it's got radar activated cruise control. So adaptive cruise control, where the bike will keep its distance from a vehicle in front of it along the road which works well and I do actually use it a lot um, there's also a function on it where you can choose how far you are away from the vehicle in front you can't change that on the move so you've got to decide if you want that big gap or a medium gap or a short gap before you before you go off which is fair enough but sometimes if um, when I've been riding in a group and I want to have a close distance to the people in front and I've forgotten to do it at the last petrol station then I'm kind of stuck with that far distance for the rest of my, for the next hour and a half or whatever, which is only a minor point, but it can get a little bit niggly. Um, but generally it works where it's good when you're two up. It, make, it actually makes the riding a bit smoother. So when you come up against a slower vehicle on the motorway, it will gradually slow down, sort of imperceptibly really to the pillion. And then when the cars moved out the way or the lorries moved out the way, the only problem is it accelerates back up to speed like Jorge Martin off the line of a MotoGP. And that can be really disconcerting if you've got a pillion. So you've kind of got to override the radar control just to bring yourself back up to speed smoothly. Um, and, and even a couple of times it accelerates so hard, I haven't been hanging on. And when the bike wants to accelerate back up to sp speed again, I've kind of almost been left not hanging on to the bars and thinking, why me? Um, but yeah, but overall it's a, it's a pretty good system and I wasn't sold with radar crews at the beginning, but now I've used one properly for a year and I go back to a normal cruise control bike when I'm road testing. 
the standard cruise control feels a little bit clunky and a little bit over involving um this bike's got a lot of electronics on it every electronic aid you can think of really from um anti-wheelie to traction control to abs and everything in between it's also got a quick shifter but the quick shifter like a lot of the electronics on this bike is a bit glitchy i would say the quick shifter works 30 percent of the time if that uh, which is a bit disappointing and i've tried all different settings with it turned it on turned it off and yeah quick shifter doesn't work so well it's also got this auto high beam which again doesn't work as as fluidly as you would operate a high and low beam you know it's, it's not really a big deal to put your high beam switch on when you're going down a country road so one of the little problems with it is it doesn't dip as soon as you want it to dip so if you're going along a road and a car's coming around a bend from the other way it doesn't it doesn't dip its headlights as fast as you would it only dips them when the, the headlights coming towards you are really sort of obvious so you kind of have to override that anyway but the lights in general are really really good the headlights great the cornering lights are fantastic it's just that you don't really need the auto function um the brakes it's got fancy brakes on it it's got a uh, brembo style my calipers it's got 320 millimeter discs everything it really needs to to stop such a big bike smartly but the ABS system robs the braking of any real feel or power, which is a real shame really. And, and also the lever will come back to the bar if you're using it hard. Again, when I was riding with my friends at a spirited pace in the Alps, my front lever, brake lever was coming back to the bar. Um, I've tried different pads in it, um, SBS sintered pads, which are fantastic, but really, no matter how good the, the pad is, everything is masked by the, the ABS system, which, yeah, there's so much, you know, travel between when you're pulling the lever, you know, where the brake fluid is pushing it all the way through these hoses, it goes through the seat, then it goes back to the calipers. It's such a long journey that it's kind of no wonder there's, there's such little feel, which is, a, a, you know, just a real shame because the braking is, represents a big part of your riding. And if that nice, tactile braking feel isn't there kind of detracts from from the riding experience a little bit so the brakes could be um, a lot better um, going back to the engine there is one thing I'm not keen on on the engine is um, surprisingly it hasn't got a lot of bottom end grunt so something like a ZZR 1400 which is packed with sort of real creamy low end power this hasn't got it you know riding at normal speeds it's fine and two up, you don't really want a lot of bottom end grunt. It's actually nice for it to be quite relatively weak at the bottom because it makes everything nice and smooth. But if you're trying to keep up with your friends, you end up riding this like a 600, surprisingly, you know, keeping it up in the revs. And, you know, for a supercharged engine and it's not supposed to have any lag compared to a turbo, you'd expect there to be more at the bottom. And unfortunately, there isn't. Um, the final thing, is uh, just a real minor thing with the electronic suspension. So with a lot of electronic suspension bikes, when you turn the ignition off, the damping winds completely off. And on a bike with the self-leveling rear, the rear preload levels off as well, which kind of lowers the bike, which is fine. But when you want to get the side stand down, especially if you're two up, it basically makes it impossible to get the side stand down without leaning over the wrong way and, and having to do it that way. Um, and also when, you know, little thing on the, on the channel tunnel train, when it's kind of sitting there, because there's no damping in the suspension, it rocks alarmingly from side to side. So you've either got to strap it down to one of the handrails on the channel tunnel train, or actually stand with it to, to stop it falling over. Um, but you know, overall, it's, it's a beautiful bike. I'm a little bit too big for it. It's not the most comfortable as I was expecting, but it is an impressive thing. One thing I'd also want to mention is tyres, because I've done so many miles, I've rattled through quite a few sets of tyres. So in standard trim, it's got Bridgestone S22 sports tyres, which are OE versions of the replacements, which are fine. I, I ran them for about 1800 miles on my, well on this one actually, not on my first SX. They wear out pretty quick. After about 1800 miles, the rear was pretty squared off and they don't really give the 
the best in terms of feel and confidence or wet grip. So they're kind of sports tyres, but I've also tried three types of sports touring tyre, which suits this bike much better. I've had a Michelin uh, Pilot Road 6, or Michelin Road 6 as they're called now, which um, are just much, much better than the, the standard Bridgestones. They're a lot plusher, they give a lot more feel, they work instantly, um, you don't have to wait for them to warm up, fantastic in the wet. They actually scored really highly on a uh, sports touring uh, comparison test that we did earlier in the year with Ride Magazine, they're right up there. So they were great, but they were stolen with my first bike. And then the other two sets of sports touring tyres I've had on this bike is Dunlop Road Smart 4s which again, like the Michelins, they're, they warm up fast, they're great in the wet. But they're kind of quite sporty, which is a good thing. They're on the sporty side of plush. They're, they're nice and light steering. So I'd really recommend those. And then finally, the bike, the tires I've got on the bike at the moment, a Metzler Rotec 01 SEs, which were the sports touring tire of the year, which are fantastic tires. And they really give you your, your cake and eat it really. You've got nice steering, you've got fantastic grip, instant warm-up, great in the wet, and last really well as well. I mean, this on these tyres, they've done a good 6,000 miles now. They still look like new. They're really, really impressive. So that's my time with uh, the Kawasaki. The question I'd ask everyone at the end of their little interview would be, would they buy one? So if I was to ask myself that, I probably wouldn't but it's given me a lot of pleasure this year. You know, it's taken me on holiday with my partner, which has just been amazing. It's been reliable. It's quite characterful. The fact it's got a supercharged engine. Everyone seems to love it, who isn't a biker. <laughs> um, and it's just so smooth and easy to ride. Lots of nice technology. Some of it doesn't work so well. Some of it's brilliant, like the dash. Um, but overall, it is an impressive kit, piece of kit. Not really for me but um, I've really enjoyed my time with it. But thanks for watching this video. Um, stay tuned for more long-term test videos coming up like this soon.